Hi there, my name is Danny Harrington. I believe you've seen me once before on this channel. And today, uh, the, uh, the loosely based topic is on the people we lose and what they meant to us. And in my world, I'm gonna stay pretty much with people involved in music, uh, although as any of you know, there are just so many other people, but to keep this to a reasonable period of time. Um, you know, you have to, I have to pay respect to the people who got me this far, and I will mention three names. First one was Bob Pettirudi, bass player in Providence who owned Twin City Music. Uh, Les Harris Sr., who was lived here in Newburyport, where I live, I became his neighbor, and was essential my, essentially my first teacher at Berkeley, and then a mentor, and then a friend, and uh, then a neighbor. And my musical father, Teddy Casher, who recently passed away, uh, that one hurts the most, because he did, the, did so much for me. And I think many of us have those feelings and those people, it might not be in your profession, obviously there are other people but Jenny will just edit them out if I talk about them, so I'm gonna stay on track. You know, and as, as you grow, I mean, I started playing music when I was five years old. I'm 71 now, recently 71, and so there's so many people. But there are people who, who have passed, and you know, the older you get, the more people seem to pass away. And um, I mean, recently, um, the gentleman who comes to mind is the great Wayne Shorter. And I must admit to not being as um, up on everything Wayne did as I would be with some other players. But Wayne was a very much an, an influence after John Coltrane to most of us, especially saxophone players. His playing is impeccable back in the 60s. The albums uh, were, were so amazing. And... Um, then he ventured off with Weather Report, which was sort of a fusion thing, and some people caught on to that, and and some people kind of didn't get it, and then they came back to it. And, you know, recently it's been his writing, his music, his contributions to humanity were overwhelming. And uh, he just was an amazing player, and uh, his writing and, and just his presence had so much of an effect on so many people. I was never fortunate enough to, to be in his presence. I never, I never met him. I did hear him play live a couple times, and it was a, a humbling experience, to say the least. But he would be the major person who's left us recently that has, that has hit the, uh, the music world, because Wayne played with everybody. He played with Carlos Santana. He played with John Coltrane. He played with Miles Davis. He played... You know, with the great weather report with Joe Zawinu and, and um, Alfonso Johnson and Jaco Pastorius, and uh, the, you could go on forever. Um, the other person who left us recently, who's not a jazz person, but David Crosby. Uh, I only saw David Crosby once. It was 1970 at the Rhode Island Auditorium. It was Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. It was my high school graduation. I went with a friend of mine and it was, we were in like the fifth row when we really had no idea who they were. And they we were just starting. And you know, that was the first, one of the first nights they ever sang the song, Ohio, the Neil Young tune. And um, it was intensely impressive. And so I, you know, I've always been a fan of Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young or Crosby, Stills, and Nash, whichever incarnation you appreciate, but, um, and he was always a character. He was always a free spirit, and, you know, um, and he did a lot of things in his life, I guess, if you listen to him in the interviews later on that weren't really healthy, and it wasn't always being nice to people, but he admitted it. He, he came full circle, and you have to respect that, but their music was... It's, it's, it still is. It's still. I mean, it's, that's the kind of music you could listen to, any any time, any time. And then the great writer of movie themes and pop songs, Burt Bacharach, 
And I remember he had recently passed away and everybody thinks of all his hits as being pop songs and just, you know, the general opinion about what a pop song is, is they're simple, they're easy to play. And we were at uh, a Joy Nest one night after he had passed and somebody said, play some Burt Bacharach. And we both looked at him and says, they're not that easy to play. There's odd meters in there. There's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. And they just, they're not the kind of things you can fake. And um, we did end up going back the following week and playing a couple ones. At least we made an attempt to. But, you know, you think about his career, his association with Dion Warwick, and um, uh, it's just, I mean, those, these three people I've just mentioned, their music, if you, that will last you the rest of your life. I mean, it's been part of my life. You can't escape Burt Bacharach's music. You can't escape Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young. If you weren't a jazzer, you could probably not have heard of Wayne Shorter. But at some point in time, Wayne Shorter played with somebody you probably admired. And the thing about Shorter that I, I want to get back to is that open-mindedness to be able to explore in other styles of music. Um, off the musician thing, but somebody that was certainly so important to Boston and area music is the, the late Eric Jackson, uh, the DJ, who anytime I had a gig, anytime I had a new recording, I'd send it to him and bang, he'd be all over it, you know, and he would do that for so many local musicians. But there was a time in Boston in the 70s when I was there studying at Berkeley where in Boston, 24 hours a day, there was jazz on the radio, whether it was GBH or Emerson or Harvard or you know, BU. Uh, it was always there, Tony Chinamo, the late Tony Chinamo. But Eric was uh, Eric in the evening, you know, starting with the, uh, that great song, Peace, Tommy Flanagan on piano, so beautiful. But he was a beautiful man. Every time I, I met him was a big hug. And, you know, that's a, a void that the Boston community is feeling. And, you know, it gets harder and harder to recreate those sort of people, you know. They, they need time to percolate, you know. And Eric was a, was a good soul. Um, lastly, I want to mention a baritone player, Ronnie Cuber, C-U-B-E-R. Ronnie was a fabulous baritone player and a big influence on me. And he played everything. I remember running into him at midnight at Strikers on West 58th Street in 1975. And he, he came in to sit in with Chet Baker for a set. And he, they asked me, do you have your horn with you? And I was like, oh, God, no, I'm not ready for this. But God, no. And um, they went up and played, and he played a set. And I said, and he says, yeah, I got to go. He says, I've got a Latin gig in the Bronx from 2 to 6 in the morning. And I always remember that. And he just ran out. And, um, what a great player. And um, he, had a, he had a wonder. All these guys had great lives, too, you know. And um, it was just their time. Chet Baker was another one. Chet Baker. He's been gone for a bit. Yeah, uh, but I think that it's sort of, you know, we had little... Um, previews of them dropping like flies. They mm. drop, you know, occasionally. And, yeah, well, but it's, it's just picking up now. You yeah, know? it's just coming a little <laughs> fast, and fast and furious and now. Yes, I know. I, I, then that night I did get a chance to meet Chet Baker. Oh, jeez. His the guy who played saxophone, Roger Rosenberg, and I were studying with the same guy in New York, and Roger was a little bit further up the food chain, probably still is. And uh, Roger brought Chet Baker over to my table, and I'm going, I was scared to death, because I thought, you know, is he going to cop it, like an attitude? Because, there, you know, there's so many stories out there about these guys, and, you know, and some of them are true, but he could not have been sweeter. He only spent about five minutes at the table, but he invited me to play any time. Just, you know, sometimes when you're young, and, well, even if you're my age, and somebody says, yeah, you should come and sit in sometime. Even if they don't mean it, it feels good. feels good. Like I met Benny Green the other night at Jimmy's Jazz and Blues. He played two hours of solo piano. He like, 
you could not have had a better night of music. He would have touched anybody. His music was was so elegant and and it's just so wonderful. He had such a great demeanor about him. And afterwards, I met him, and we talked about people we know in common. And he says, "Well, the next time I'm in Boston, we should play." And I said, "Be careful what you wish for, because I will I will hold you to that." And I'll have a nervous breakdown if it ever happens, but it would be just a beautiful thing to play one song with that guy. But it's it, you know, and that's when these guys are kind to you when you're younger. It it gives you energy, I think, you know, because you're overwhelmed with how much better they play than you do. And um, so, yeah, I mean, I think it's the, the sad part of of getting older is that you find more people leaving you. The thing about music that's um, so haunting is that. Um the voices and the music lives on and you can still hear it and and it's such for me it's so powerful you know a, a person i used to love a long time ago her music was eva cassidy yes and um she left way too soon way too soon and you know i still listen to her and, oh you know like she's still around and her she, she's timeless absolutely i don't know anybody that's ever heard her that can't, you know, you just can't stop listening to her, like Autumn Leaves and right. uh, just her her approach to, she's so unique in her way of presenting those classic songs. She takes them and makes them her own. And, uh, but I think, you know, when we were young, you know, we sort of had an intro to this with Otis Redding and, you know, different people that died along, you know, um, um, well, look at Hendrix the, and you know like, Hendrix, Janis Joplin, Jim Morrison, uh, Amy Winehouse, absolutely. all at the same age. What, twenty-seven years old? Right. So I mean, so sad. And Charlie Parker. Oh, that's right. Thirty-two years old, and the obituary, the uh, M. Coroner's report said a man in his sixties, and he was thirty, thirty-two or thirty-four, maybe thirty-four, but you know, way too young. And they all led that life, that life that everybody likes to talk about. All those people who aren't musicians like to say, you know, hey, man, what are you guys doing after the gig? You know, I'm going home and go to bed. I'll just play three hours. I'm tired. <laughs> well, that's a real boomer. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's like, you know, everybody, everybody thinks the party never ends. And, you know, that's that's the that's the young person. I don't. I don't know any guy I work with anymore that's not heading back to their house. Last night I was at um, a place and listening to some music and um, during the break um, I was outside and one of the people in the group who was playing was out there smoking a joint and I haven't seen that in a really long time. And you, you, you usually won't. <laughs> I know, but he was much younger yeah. and, and I think the older guys were in there just sitting there like, oh, when is this going to be over, you know? It is. It is what it is. Yeah, um, it was funny. Yeah, there were, I'm old enough to have lived through the days where that was a very common oh, sure. thing. I remember carrying guys off the bandstand, and um, yeah, they were dropping like flies in a different way. Yes, <laughs> yes their consciousness was gone. So yeah. So Danny, this has been really interesting listening to you. I think. Um, that's I guess time will tell. Yes. Is there anything else you wanted to add? No, I just, I, I think that um, writing all these names down with, the, with this task at hand and made me think of people that I hadn't thought about. And, you know, it's, it's not easy. I, I could cry at a Geico commercial, so it gets a little overwhelming sometimes. But I think it's important not to forget you know, and the nice thing about music is uh, you play a gig with somebody and says, you remember when we played with that guy? And that was like 15, 20 years ago, and that and, guy's not here. And their music lives on, and it will always be a part of you. So that's, yes, that's, that's the beauty of it. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you let them, they'll be there. Yeah.